Hello, YouTubers. Greetings. <coughs> A little while I've been since I've been on. Um, seems to me that I'm doing a sort of fortnightly show because I take every other Monday off at the moment because I've got some annual leave to take off. So, with the kids at school, the wife's safely ensconced downstairs, out of the way. I can actually get up into the loft in on Monday afternoons and um, make a video without any disturbance from children or wives hopefully. That's of course her cue to start asking me stuff from downstairs, probably involving websites or whatever else she wants to rattle my cage about. <coughs> anyway, so um, I've not been up in the loft much recently because it's been absolutely bitterly cold down here and I can't be sitting here um, running fan heaters for hours on end because that just is silly. So as it's Monday afternoon it's quite warm up here now, no heating on, I can actually get up and do something. So what I was going to do, um, it's going to be slightly different this time, so not concentrating so much on the figures because I haven't done um, much painting recently but I have been doing some other little things which I was going to show you including some books that I've got off, sorry, got from eBay and also in the local bookshop which every now and then I pop in do to see if they've got any bargains and I buy things and then my daughter says dad you've just spent 18 pounds on two hardback books there what will mummy say and I say fortunately the uh, price has been written in pencil so I get my rubber out and I rub it out and I write three quid <laughs> or two quid even She's none the wiser. So, on with the show. So, this is the first one which I got from eBay, which is Donald Featherston. And this is the one Ian has got, the Diomede. <coughs> or at least a, probably not the same copy, but. Uh, it's the same book essentially from the 1970s so he's talking about lots of airfix figures in here which of course suits me no end and there's quite a lot of photo well black and white in there but he goes through um, construction of boards and there's some of these games that Ian is working his way through uh, and you can tell by looking at a lot of these figures that they're old airfix ones that I've had in the past um, he talks about converting figures as well nice little tip there on your plastic figures you put them in boiling water leave them in there for a little bit then bend them and then run them under a cold tap to make them stay in the position so you can slightly modify figures that way that was a nice little tip but yeah very pleased with that can't remember how much i paid for about four quid or something but seems i haven't had any donald featherstone books at all in my adult life i used to borrow them all from the library and read them avidly and then of course i had to hand them back so i'm going to start buying as many of these as I can get to build up my library. So that's number one. Number two is Weatherston, sorry, Featherstone's Complete Wargaming. Very nice book, this one. my legs as every girl knows around here. Um, so this one actually has colour in it. Uh, again I got this off eBay very cheaply. Uh, 
And this one basically takes you through lots of different campaigns and talks about buying airfix. Um, American Civil War troops that you, you can do a campaign with just three or four boxes of airfix figures because of course those are the only things available in his time plus the more expensive lead ones he goes on about. But yes, this is a very nice lots of hints about rules in here. He goes on about the storming of Evan ML. So quite a few maps. So it covers lots of different periods as you could expect. So it's a sort of jack of all trades. Bits on the Boer War. Modern Warfare. Tank Warfare. And if you haven't got this one, I'd recommend it. Very, very good. So again, he covers lots and lots of different periods in here to keep you interested. As always, it's a very good read. Um, oops. Lots of airfix troops in there. Yeah, and it's very nice to have the colour option. So that was number two. And this was one of the ones I found in the bookshop the other day. Um, I was going to buy this a couple of years ago, never got around to it. So I managed to pick this up for probably half price in the local bookshop. And it's a very good read, so it's a history of airfix basically. Um, lots and lots of pictures about all the kits in there. very much concentrates on the aeroplane kits which I'm not so keen on so maybe that's something more for Von Ketteringham to be interested in rather than myself but it basically goes through the two, the two times that Airfix were bought out first of all by Humbrol who I didn't know was really the Humber Oil Company so they were a paint manufacturer in Hull and they bought Airfix out until the Humbrol factory got burnt down in a massive fire in Hull, so I've probably been able to see it from uh, Diomede's bedroom window, um, which is a shame that it burnt down. And then, of course, they were taken over by uh, Hornby, who also owns Scale Electrics and Meccano, so all the great toy manufacturers together under one roof and going from strength to strength. So yeah, heartily, heartily recommend this one. Very good read. And um, I discovered, actually, while I was reading this, that the original Airfix factory was just down the road from me because I live just on the borders of Wandsworth and their huge factory is actually in Wandsworth. It's a 20 minute bus ride from here. so. What I'm probably going to do is go down, because all the buildings are still there. They've turned it into an industrial estate, um, because of all the large buildings, obviously. So what I'll probably do one day is just go down there and take a video or take some photographs of the place and maybe post that up. Um, so, yeah, a lot of these Airfix soldiers that I'm painting at the moment were probably made just round the corner in the 70s. So isn't that a strange twist of fate? Anyway, on with the next one. Go handheld for this one because the tripod isn't uh, far enough away. So what I'll do is talk you through this one, which I again found in the local bookshop. And I paid ten quid for it, but shh, keep it dumb. She's downstairs and right here. So it's basically it's the British Army and her allies. I'm not sure if there's a companion French one. Well, no, their only other book according to this so far is Battle Studies in the Peninsula. But this is the British Army and our Allies. And it talks you through British, Brunswick, Dutch, Belgian, etc, etc, etc. Quite large sections on each. And if I just scroll through 
It's got a bit of a history of the armies in there. And there's loads and loads of statistics in here of how many troops were available at certain times. How many people were actually, how many men were actually in these units. And how much it cost you to actually become an officer. Let me just scroll through what it has got is the complete listings of every unit um, and the facings and the metalwork on the uniforms. Now I know you can get this on <coughs> the internet anyway but it's quite nice to actually have this to hand and you can get really uh, sad and read it from cover to cover which knowing me I probably will do. So if I'm looking to find out what uh, the facings were of the 28th foot North Gloucestershire's then we know that they had yellow facings with silver metalwork etc and so on. So It also lists the engagements fought by the units as well, so which regiment was, a, was present at which campaign, and whether they were on garrison duty. So loads and loads of information in there. If you haven't got this one, I'd well reckon it's got all the stuff on the Prussians there as well, the, the facings and all of that. Stuff. It even tells you how many men were on the roll or present at um, these various campaigns as well. So they've really done their research, even got the Swedish army in there. So Fascinating. But yeah, I like that one. I haven't got around to reading it yet, but I will do. Finish the airfix one, but not this one. So I shall start on that very shortly. And I was in my local artist shop the other day and I found this. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Um, a nice little pot of acrylic paints. And then I looked at the price. And it said 10.99, reduced from 14. I thought lovely, so I got them home, and then uh, opened the top, got the blue out, um, this one, and thought, yeah, that's going to be just the right sort of colour for doing those carassiers I've got. And you know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> because it was only then that I discovered that they were in fact oils. Now I don't know if any of you guys have painted oils, uh, it's not the same. They're lovely colours but boy do they take a long time to dry so you can um, use them and they do come out rather nicely because if you compare I'll just get these two down as an example because I've been looking for the, the right sort of colour to do for my cuirassiers so I'll just get this out of the way now I know I said I wasn't doing figures but it's figures with oil, it doesn't count um, so if I just get these in the light here so this one is with acrylics, so what's essentially a base coat there, and I need to get darker colour on there, but this is what this one here is painting straight with oil. And I think it's a much nicer colour. Um, and 
it needs a couple of coats, I think, but it will work. You just have a lot longer drying time, so probably around about two days for that to dry. So you could do the rest in acrylic and then this nice shiny stuff that you want in uh, oils. It does work, but as I say, a damn long drying time. So it's an experiment, but I think it looks all right. Well, we'll do when I put the second coat on, but there you go. So that's that. Um, completely independently of Diomede's excellent battle report that he did the other day, um, a few weeks ago I'd spotted a nice cheap and easy way of making... what are they called? Movement trays. Bloody hell, that took a while. Okay, so movement trays. And originally I thought I wasn't going to use them, I would just have my guys in. Each company would have a three, a two and a one, so I could take casualties off. And I'd just move them around like that. And it would take a long time doing it, particularly when you've got lots and lots to move. So movement trees are definitely a better option so what i did was i got my six guys because they're all the same size including my civil war and i drew round the base leaving enough space all around the edges for pudding. Some struts here. Struts, okay, pieces of wood basically. They're not pieces of wood really, they are extra long cook's matches. And they're ideal because you can get the right length. So what I did is I take those out and I measure it. So I know that this is going to fit now because this is basically my template for cutting out the next lot. And I cut them out from other beer mats. So there is beginning to become a beer mat shortage in my local pub because some bugger keeps nicking them. Can't imagine who it is. Um, so yeah, so you've got your template that you can make your others from, and then you measure out the first one. So the long edge. It's going to be like that. I mark it. use snippers for this which is a lot lot quicker but you get a nicer edge with a scalpel you can sand that if you really need to if you're that anal about it but these are cheap and cheerful really so there's your first one and then you do the edges and put another long one on that end glue them down always glue the long ones down first you can use these to keep them attached. So make sure you've got lots of these hanging around as well. I keep um, finding these at work. So I've got quite a lot of them. Um, ahem, 
<laughs> hem hem. So once you've done that, so you've got your first two on and then you glue down your two edges, making sure you hide all the bits that are damaged. And then you've got a nice little base there. And I'll just take this off here to show you from above. So there you have the two units held in there and you can move them around and then you take them out when you have your casualties. So that's the basis of it and what I'll show you next because that's all well and good but it's still a piece of beer mat with some matchsticks on it. So I shall show you the next phase. So I've now slapped, what you can do is um, use a PVA wash on it first just so that it uh, takes the paint better but you can see it's just the beer mat and I've slathered it with green. I'm just waiting for that to dry and when it is dry, probably need two coats if you're really that bothered about seeing the beer mat through there but bear in mind they're going to be covered with figures anyway so is it really that important can do um, but at the moment you could leave them out like that as well I don't see why not but you can't tell that it's uh, much sticks on a beer mat can you? and what you're going to need because I do my companies in sixes I'm going to need six of these all together for one um, battalion okay so I shall wait for this to dry and then I'll show you the final phase next <coughs> is get my PVA glue with a smallish brush and then go around the edge it's quite awkward actually looking through the camera doing it at the same time. However, so I've done all the way around the edge and I'm just finishing off here. So this is along the top. You could do the fronts as well, which I think I might do. The fronts of these um, bits because then it'll look a it's going to be a mess, bit of a mess on your table, so actually what I'm probably do is not bother. But the good thing about this is, is that the little gaps on the corners here um, will get covered up. So it will look seamless. Okay, so let's just pause it there while I get my... This one I've just made, and as you can see it is clamped, just to keep it... Uh, secure and of course if you're using these then it'll stand up like that and you can have them all in a row okay so that's that phase and now if I just come over here and that's the first four done All the racket downstairs, of course, because as they've now started arriving home. But there you go. I think they look much better, and they're a lot easier to move around as well. But I hear you say that's fine for the infantry, but what about the cavalry? So, aha! As I was saying, what about the cavalry? Well, you can do exactly the same thing. Just a slightly larger um, tree. To fit and that's my going to be my first template for sitting four horsed figures in a tree. What you can do of course is if you want to put all 12 
in a tree, you just make a bigger tree using more matchsticks and more um, pieces of cardboard, or a longer piece of cardboard I should say. So there you go. So a very cheap, in fact virtually inexpensive method. For this one I just used some uh, thin cardboard, of which I have a copious amount. And the four matchsticks again. So there you go. Now one, two questions quickly. Um, I have all these guys from the foot guards who have these gaiters on their legs. Now, if someone can tell me what colour to paint them, they look all right as white. Um, I might make them a bit greyish, greyer rather. But if somebody wants to tell me what colour these should be, or whether they should be the same grey as the trousers, let me know. And um, one last one. Buying some figures from eBay, uh, this guy came ready painted. And he looks as if he's been converted because I cannot find any plastic figure that matches this guy. So if anybody's got any ideas of what he's been converted from, we may have even put a, a different head on this guy. But he's uh, a very nice little chap. But I haven't got a clue where he's come from. I think they've stuck various bits on here. Interesting. Okay, that's it for this one. Um, I'll be doing a couple more videos soon, including the sort of follow-up from the one I did on um, the, uh, the dry brushing of the metal parts of a figure. So what I'm going to do for the next one is how I apply washes to figures. So keep tuned in for that one. Shouldn't be too long before that one comes up as well. Okay, see you guys.